40 past the hour. We talked to our man, Teddy Kegstat. Great day to do it. If you haven't checked out the Tiger Forex report, folks, with everything going on, with Forex right now, with the yen, with yields, with commodities, I encourage you. While we're talking to Teddy, you're listening to our interview, head on over to the front page of TFNN. Under the newsletter tab, you'll find Teddy's outstanding weekly newsletter, the Tiger Forex report. You can sign up for that. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee. You gain access to the newsletter, folks. Check it out. And, boy, it's a great day to talk as we're talking about the yen with weakness we have not seen. I had to check my math, Teddy. 1990, man, 34 years. Good morning, Teddy. 34 years ago and about another month is when I first placed my first trade, and I'll be 35 years in the business also in about another month and a half. <laughs> so I remember that time. Experience and history, as we know, man, sometimes um, you, you can't match that type of experience when you, you live through some of those deals. Um, yeah, let's jump into it, man. Of course, you got a little bit of commentary. We've been talking about it. You've had some great calls out here. And yeah, we got a little bit of a pullback. We're sitting, I got the chart up here, 151.33. We hit 151.97 earlier today, of course. Bank of Japan officials, um, not quite comfortable with that level, but you know they aren't the, the say-all of the market sometimes. What do you think about this price action, man? Pretty remarkable. Well, you know what? It's very interesting. You know, you hear all this talk about, you know, it's been 34 years since they've been at this level. No one's talking about the interest rate dynamic. Back then, our interest rates were very, very much higher than they are now. Okay. Which is no one's even talking about that. And Great point. it's interesting that, you know, people are wondering, you know, the Bank of Japan recently just did their first move in, you know, forever to begin with. What are they going to do? You know, the 150, the Tiger Forex report now for months, I've had this line literally at 150. It's the BOJ threshold line, you know, and we now we're trading above it. And this is after central bank intervention on their part. And we know that ours is not going to happen at probably at least until June, you know, and unless that happens, it's going to be very hard for us to get really too far below the 150 level right now with dollar strength and it's kind of odd that this, like you know it's very interesting right now that we're we're looming on a rate cut and dollar strength right now is looming there and you know usually in times of trouble and stuff like that the bonds are flight to quality and you know so is the US dollar you know what's interesting so is the swiss the one currency that's breaking out right now that no one's talking about is the U.S. dollar Swiss. You know, granted that right now the yen U.S. dollar relationship is at a very high threshold and definitely where they don't want it to be. Uh, but no one's even looking at the fact that the one currency that's really breaking out is the U.S. dollar Swiss. And, and, and that's where I think that these, these currency dynamics, the, the coil is winding right now. If you look at like interest rates right now between the, especially the 10 and the 30 year on our end, we've been in a range trade since the 1st of December. We, we hit the, the higher end of our range right before the first of the year and we've been bobbling off the lower end for the last month and a half and, and we're not going anywhere. you know. And, and, and we talked about this before already that we ha definitely have at least a quarter point factored into the market. you know. So we're, what does this dynamic mean? It means that un unless there's any real big intervention on the Japanese part, um, they're, most likely we, we're pretty much going to stay around these levels. Can we have a sell-off? Absolutely. It, we would be due for a profit-taking correction without a doubt. But it's very hard to see how we're not going to stay bobbling around this somewhere around 150 level probably for the next few months at the very least, especially with oil at, at, the, at the 80 plus dollar level as well. You know, like the only reason I could see that the yen is going to get back to like 145 or lower would mean that we're going to see oil back in the 70s. And we're also going to see us having at least one rate cut under our belt. You know, so until that happens. I would say get used to these price levels and maybe even see a spike. Now, I'd be careful being on the long side also. You know, how far can we go to the upside? Well, if we're on a rate cut edge, odds are we're buffering that ceiling to begin with. You know, unless there's any real reason for U.S. dollar strength, which there isn't, you know, I'd be careful, you know, buying into these highs. You know, I think that if you're buying dips between 148 and 150, looking for a spike up to 152, 153, that's a great place. I'd be very careful buying up at the 153 level, though. It's a great point, man. I appreciate the take. 
and for those listeners, even if they've heard it once or twice, Teddy, I love and I, I, it's it's something that stayed with me for so long when you first had the conversations about the fundamental nature of you know commodities, sp- particularly crude, and the U.S. and then comparatively to something like the yen. When you talked about how crude could play into that, could you just give those listeners out there just one more quick ex- explanation of how you know whether it's the U.S. we're a producer now and how that plays into things when you talk about how the crude price could impact particularly the U.S. dollar yen? Oh, absolutely. So we, the U.S. is one of Japan's major suppliers to begin with. So the price of oil right there is, has a fundamental relationship between us and them. Also. The petrodollar oil has been basically priced in dollars globally for decades now. You know, it's now it's starting to turn the euro and other currencies as well. But th- no matter what, when the Japanese buy oil from us, they're converting yen to dollars. You know, so there's a currency risk right there. There's a currency cost, if you will, besides the fact that there's the price of oil. And the thing is, is that Japanese don't have oil, and they're a ma- they're one of the biggest economic you know, manufacturing engines on the planet. You know, they're an island and they, they have such an output. You know, um, if, if oil runs in short supply, the machines turn off and it's just that simple, you know. So, I mean, their economy is really based on, you know, what they can, what their output can be. And their output is obviously commodity driven. You know, it's not just the materials to make things. Um, you need the, the materials to, to have the machines running. Without the machines running, there are there's no products, correct? You know, so and that's where oil becomes a very big fundamental. You know, it's also one of the reasons why you know World War II. How did we you know strangle hold the Japanese? We had the embargo, we cut off the oil supply, and that's you know obviously how you know Pearl Harbor happened and things like that. You know, but we we all know how history ended with that part. But Oil was a big part of it, you know. I mean, so think about it. If oil could be used for war, it's also an economic thing. And especially when you have currency risk at the same point and with central banks that are on the opposite fence, you have the Bank of Japan that (laughs) by no means are they hawkish, you know, um, just because they finally raised raised the rate, you know, from zero to a quarter percent, you know. uh, But uh, we're also just because we're going to start maybe Cutting, easing a little bit, it doesn't mean that we're dovish. It just means that after raising a bunch, we're retracting a little bit, you know, sure. and that relationship is how the US dollar yen really be. And I love that relationship. Like of all the currencies, you have that dynamic. You know, I always say the best indicator is the markets. Oil is a great indicator for what you do with the US dollar yen relationship, no matter which what the trend is. You know, you can buy dips or sell rallies based off of that commo- those commodity trends. I appreciate the explanation because I think it just is, it taught me so much. And like you say, it's such a great example, but in terms of supply and demand, currencies, what's driving the action, and I'm sure it applies to more than just that currency, but I I appreciate that, man. Teddy, that was a quick 90 minutes, man. I appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week, brother. Thank you, Tommy. Take care. Thanks so much. Folks, check out that Tiger Forex report. You too, Teddy. Have a great Easter, man. We'll be back to finish up the show.